Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FBL Consult here and today we're going to take a look at our Game Week 36 team selection. So we're going to quickly go through Game Week 35 which is pretty much a nothing Game Week. A lot of us got very low scores so we'll breeze through Game Week 35 and then after that we'll take a look at some transfer plans that I'm thinking about before taking a look at the final Game Week 36 team selection. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this video and if you do, please give it a like and also subscribe as well if you are new around here. There's only three more Game Weeks left so I want to thank all you guys for the support this season i really appreciate every single one of you watching my videos so very quickly let's go through game week 35 right so it's a very small red arrow uh, i'm still hovering around the you know high 70s to low 80s kind of um, overall rank i'm at 81k now hopefully um, at best i want to at least i want to stay in the top 100k i'm aiming for the top 50k so hopefully we can get there um, currently, for Game Week 35, I scored 36 points. The Game Week average was 39, which I think speaks for itself. A lot of us didn't manage to get very high scores this week because a lot of the very low-owned players, players like Dwight McNeil, right, um, Awun Yi, all these players are the ones that returned in Game Week 35, which was kind of a weird Game Week, right? So, Take a look, taking a look at my team, there's really not too many returns to uh, shout about. There's only a clean sheet from Trent Alexander-Arnold. There's a 10-pointer from Mohamed Salah for scoring that goal. And then there is an assist from Karu Mitoma. So 5 points for him. And that's pretty much it. Everyone else blanked. Right? So there's a couple of things that I do want to mention. Edison, of course, didn't manage to keep a clean sheet again from one of those um, you know, one shot on target and he concedes kind of situation. And then um, Estupinian, of course, got smashed by Everton. Right, Luke Shaw also didn't manage to keep a clean sheet because West Ham scored 1-0. Same for Marcus Rashford as well, didn't get a return. Solly March was really unlucky. He came on uh, at the start of the second half, played really well. He looked really good. I was uh, very happy that I had him, right? And I was pretty confident going into Game Week 36 that he'd be a really good differential, right? And then thereafter, he comes off... Um, Pull, pulling his hamstring basically right so he's pretty much out for the rest of the season so very unlucky and there's also one more um injury that i have to deal with right aside from all the other transfer plans i already have so i'll talk a little bit about what i intend to do with him later on right but as for return still right phil foden he was almost going to get an assist he won the penalty which harlan didn't take and gave to gunagan and gunagan missed it so had Haaland actually taken it and scored, it would be a dream situation because Haaland is my captain. Foden would have gotten an assist as well. He would be a very big differential for me. But of course, that didn't happen. That that This is what happens in FPL sometimes, I guess. Right, so Ollie Watkins also just a one-pointer. So I guess the bright side of this whole situation is that I didn't leave too many points on my bench. Right, Only uh, all one-pointers for the outfielders on my bench. So Trippier, Botman, Greenwood, all one-pointers. And then Kepa, of course, with that three-pointer um, against Bournemouth. So here we go. This is how I did for Game Week 35. Let me know how you uh, how you guys did. I think a lot of us didn't manage to score great scores. So hopefully in Game Week 36, it'll look better. So in terms of possible transfers for Game Week 36, what I intend to do is to sell Oli Watkins and bring in either of Isak or Wilson. Right, so this was already part of the plans from earlier on. I already wanted to bring in a Newcastle forward in Game Week 36. So it's really a question about whether I choose Isak or Wilson. And I will probably leave this decision all the way until the deadline stream where we hopefully get some leaks because Newcastle and Leeds is the early kickoff. Right, so just to kind of elaborate a little bit on my thought process when it comes to Isak versus Wilson. If we do get the leaks, right, I think it will be a situation, uh, it will be three possible situations, right? One is that Wilson starts, another is that Isak starts, and another is that both start, right? So going through one by one, I think if either one of them start, right, if only Isak or only Wilson start, I think it's pretty straightforward that I'll just choose the attacker um, that is starting the Leeds game, right? But if both start, then I think it starts to get a little bit more complicated, right? Because if both start, it will probably mean that Callum Wilson will be playing in that number 9 role, which I would probably favour him in that position. And on top of that, he is slightly ahead of Isak in terms of penalties as well. So I think when Wilson starts, he is definitely the better asset than, than Isak. He puts up much better numbers as well 
But the only thing is, I think moving forward, looking at my transfer plans as well, I will probably need this striker for Game Week 37 as well. And Game Week 37 is when they play Leicester, who have been super leaky as well. So making this transfer is actually also having Game Week 37 in mind for me, where I will want to play this striker. So if you were to put a gun to my head right now and ask me to choose one before we get any leaks, I think I would probably favour Alexander Isak simply because of his expected minutes. I think it is more likely that he'll start at least two out of the three games right that are coming up so two in game week 36 and one in game week 37 so at least two but i think for wilson it is very possible that he may only just start one out of the three um, upcoming games right bearing in mind as well sean longstaff is still injured he'll probably be injured um, you know, for quite a while. And that also means that Joe Linton drops back. So it'll be a midfield three of Bruno Guimaraes, um, Joe Willock and Joe Linton. So up front, there are a couple of permutations that he can have. If they choose to just play with one number nine, it'll be either of Isak and, or, or Wilson, right? And on the left and on the right of the striker will probably be Jacob Murphy uh, or Almiron, right? On the right and on the left side, it could also be Alan St. Maximin, of course, right? So there are a lot of permutations that... Um, Eddie Howe can play around with and of course if they both start together we we'll probably see Isak on the left as well so in terms of um, Isak's flexibility and adaptability into, into the positions that he can play I guess it also helps his expected minutes as well so if you want to put a gun to my head right now and say choose one player I'll probably go for Isak but if we get news um, of both of them starting in game week um, 36 against Leeds, right? If we do get the early team leak, of course, I may just go for Wilson in that case. I may be tempted to go a little bit different there. So it is very close. I'll probably leave it to the end. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to put Isak in because if you were to put a gun to my head, I choose Isak for now. Right, so let me know what you guys think. Who would you guys be going for? Are you going for either one of them? Or are you going for both? And just to touch on Solly March before we move on to my Game Week 36 team, right, it's simply that I think there are a lot of um, you know, permutations that I can go with Solly March. I can bench him this week. I can sell him for McAllister. I can even sell him for a Newcastle attacker. So ruling out uh, one by one, I can't go for a Newcastle attacker because I want to bring in... Um, either Isak or Wilson, and I'm already doubled up in defense. So that takes out that option. Then the next option would probably be Solly March to Alexis McAllister, in which case I'm not too fond of Alexis McAllister this week because they play Arsenal away and Newcastle away. So McAllister will probably drop a lot deeper to provide some stability in the midfield for Brighton, in which case when that happens, I think returns will be few and far between for McAllister. So... I'm not too fond of much McAllister this week, but I fully understand that next week in Game Week 37, Brighton do have a double as well. So I may delay this move March to McAllister to next week. Right, so let me know what you guys think and let's take a look now at the Game Week 36 team. So if I do make the move of Oli Watkins to Alexander Isak and I captain Isak, this is probably how I would line up going into Game Week 36. And I know it's going to raise a couple of eyebrows because on my bench, there are two double Game Week players, two Brighton players, right? So hear me out. Solly March, as I mentioned just now, I'm not too keen on transferring him out for Alexis McAllister. So him being on the bench, I think is fine, right? But Estupinian, I know a couple of you guys are starting him, but I'm not too fond of the, the, the number of points that he'll Will get this week. He plays Arsenal away and Newcastle away. Both of them are chasing for um, their own respective goals, right? Arsenal are fighting with City for the Premier League title and Newcastle are vying for the Champions League places as well, which is not secured by any means, right? So they will still have to go all out and, and try to win as many games as they can moving forward. So I do think like Estupinian or Brighton will concede in both those games and that will probably mean that we would be relying on attacking returns for Estupinian. So in which case, I'm not too fond of, of that, right? So if I do bench Estupinian, right, this is how I'm likely going to line up in a 4-4-2 formation. So starting at the back in goal first, I'm going to favour Kepa ahead of Edison simply because I think um, Everton currently are... Um, kind of on an uptick right now 
they are above the relegation zone, they're going to give their all, especially at Goodison Park. So I think there is a chance after putting five past Brighton that their confidence could be high and they may get something against um, Edison. In which case, I think Kepa will be slightly preferred uh, for this week and that's why he's in my starting eleven. Chelsea are also starting to turn a corner a little bit here so hopefully they can keep a clean sheet against Nottingham Forest. Kepa of course is better for save points as well as compared to Edison who simply just concedes from that one shot on target so I'm hoping that Kepa will outscore Edison but I know once I bench Edison something is going to happen and he's going to score a lot of points this week so hopefully that doesn't happen so in my defense there's four defenders now Trippier and Botman are my double Newcastle defense and then I've chosen to go for Trent and Shaw as well ahead of Estupinian who has a double now I know a couple of you guys will be starting Estupinian but I do think like Trent and Shaw are being overlooked this week right because Trent plays Leicester away who are conceding so many chances and Trent of course is picking up a lot of assists as well from this new role that he's in so I do think like if they keep a clean sheet and on top of that he gets attacking returns that's double digit hauls for Trent right there and for Luke Shaw as well even though he is playing left centre back I think his chances for clean sheet is pretty high simply because I think Wolves when they play away from home aren't that good of a side as compared to when they play um, in their home ground at Molyneux right so Basically, I do think like a clean sheet will be in store for Shaw as well, in which case I think he will outscore Estupinian, um, who I believe will concede in both those games against Arsenal and Newcastle. Right, so in defense, this is how I'm going to look like. In midfield, there's Foden, Salah, Mitoma and Rashford. Right, so Mitoma, of course, is my doubler and I'll probably just start him simply because he's very highly owned and he will kind of protect my rank a little bit by having him in my team. And I do think, like, if Brighton are to score, he does look like the, the most bright spark right out there. Right, so uh, no pun intended, right, but I do think, like, Mitoma is looking very sharp. He really passes the eye test and he has been pretty unlucky not to get more returns of late. Right, so moving on to the single game week players in midfield, there's Phil Foden who I think will probably get a start against Everton. When I was watching the uh, Man City versus Real Madrid game, I was hoping that the, the game would still remain or the scoreline would still remain very tight so that Grealish and Bernardo Silva would be saved for the second leg. So getting a 1-1 draw out of Man City versus Real Madrid kind of meant that, um, you know, I think moving forward, I mean, of course, this is speculation, but I think that Grealish and uh, Bernardo Silva will be rested for this Everton game so that they can be fully fit to play that Real Madrid game, uh, the second leg, basically, next week. So in which case, I think when that happens, Foden and Mahrez's expected minutes go up. So I am pretty confident Foden starts. And of course, whoever whichever attacker starts for Man City they're going to get chances and if they do convert I think it could be quite a couple of goals that we see here so hopefully Foden picks up a couple of returns Salah as well playing Leicester away who have been conceding goals for free right so hopefully he gets some returns as well Rashford also vying for the uh, Champions League places so they're going to have to go all out and hopefully Rashford can get something he has been in somewhat of a dry, a dry spell recently right so hopefully he picks up some returns and gets back into form, right? I mean, the um, downturn of United's form is also kind of related to Rashford's performances recently. They haven't been as good, right? So I do understand that he has dropped off a little bit, but hopefully um, against Wolves, he can... Um, you know, find something in him to get some returns. And I, I think there's no point wasting a transfer on players like Marcus Rashford, who I think we'll just keep for the rest of the season. All right, so up front, there's um, Alexander Isak, of course, that I just brought in. Probably will captain him. Whether it's Wilson or Isak, it's not confirmed yet. But for the purpose of this video, I have Isak here. Whoever I bring in, I will captain. All right, so that will be my, my captain option, whether it's Isak or Wilson. And then the vice captain will be Trippier at the, in defense. All right, so... In terms of Erling Haaland, I think it's nothing much to say here. Whether he starts on uh, or not, right, he will be in my starting eleven, right? And I do think there is a chance that he may get rested against Everton. But based on historical figures, we have seen that whether or not there's a Champions League tie the following uh, midweek, he will still play in the Premier League if he's fit. So hopefully he starts against Everton. 
and get some returns as well. Alright, so there we go. This is how my team is looking like for Game Week 36. Let me know what you guys think. I know there will be a couple of comments mentioning that I have two double Game Week players on my bench. But I am keen to understand as well what you guys think of the team. So let me know down in the comments below. And I will catch you guys in the Game Week 36 deadline stream. There's only three more deadline streams left. So I hope to see you guys there three hours before the deadline as always. And I'll catch you guys again soon.